that was perfect. Go ahead, Ife. I really appreciate how what's being offered is it's kind of moves from the macro to the specific. Kind of moves from the macro to the specific with what um, has been offered. So there's a, a systems analysis that's necessary um, when we're talking about the climate crisis, what got us into this situation, and uh, which are these broader uh, systems of where white supremacy, economic, uh, colonial capitalism. Uh, is kind of creating the conditions for then industrial capitalism to to have created this situation where the, the planet is warming to the degree that it is to the point where over between 150 and 200 species are going extinct each and every day. Um, and then kind of bringing it down to the importance, the role that regenerative agriculture can play in, among one of many solutions to the climate crisis. And examples of that that um, Soul Fire Farm is using and that we are using with our homes, the homestead specifically is around no-till, uh, so we don't till the land, we don't pull up um, uh, or dig into the soil uh, because doing so then releases carbon that's naturally held within the soil, but instead we build on top of the soil, garden beds, we use mulch to hold in nutrients, um, cover cropping to keep the soil covered, the, the root systems of cover crops of plants and trees uh, hold together the soil. So to the extent that we can keep maintain the, the integrity and the structure of the soil, it means that it mitigates erosion. Erosion releases carbon, it, um, it creates further erosion, and so uh, to the extent that our practices can mitigate that and prevent mm -hmm. it, that's what we're doing. We also intercrop, so planting, uh, not as opposed to monocropping, where there are like acres and acres of uh, corn or um, peanuts or, or something, and, and in order to maintain such an unnatural presence of, of plants in the world, I mean, no plant grows naturally that way. We plant multiple crops that kind of complement one another. They cover the ground, so some cover the ground and put nutrients into the soil that taller crops are able to uh, draw and use as nourishment as they grow taller. So intercropping is an important um, uh, pr regenerative agricultural practice that we use. We also um, use uh, composting. So where we can um, you, to create our own compost from old food scraps that are able to naturally degrade and in time, you know, there's a process to it, but we're able to put that hummus, that rich uh, vitamin nutrients on top of the soil and then that feeds the soil. So instead of dump, putting it into the, the dumps, the city dumps, by taking that food waste and composting it, we're able to create our own fertilizer. We have chickens on our um, in, in our place uh, here in Chesterfield, so we use uh, uh, chicken uh, manure and that and incorporate that into the composting as well. Um, silvopasture, so just as an example of that, it's using the grazing of, of animals as part of the the garden or farm operation where they're they can move in different places and eat and then their poop fertilizes the areas that can then be planted in in the next season. So it, these are just some of the examples of regenerative agriculture that, are, that we're implementing and, and have implemented to, um, to build up the soil, to keep it nourished and healthy, and to maintain the, or, or to keep and bury, uh, sequester carbon in the soil. Um, there's also a portion of land, so to, if, if you have access to land or on land, if there's a portion that can be dedicated to the, um, just growing trees and, and perhaps even uh, you can agroforestry um, and do some harvesting among uh, within tree communities, like being preserving and protecting trees is another very important aspect of, of agroforestry and of um, helping to address or mitigate the climate crisis. Because again, when we pull trees up, trees are important. Um, number one, they help keep carbon in the soil. 
They also help prevent soil erosion, and um, and they keep and those are very important aspects of uh, uh, that. If if we don't do those things, then it helps to accelerate um, climate crisis. These are things that we can do as individuals and as I guess operators of farm operation. Um, to the extent that we all can do them, we're developing practices and uh, that are helpful and relationship with the land that in, that's important. And to get back to the whole systems question, you know, our, us as individuals are not the main contributors to the climate crisis. And so there's still an element of, of addressing and um, opposing uh, systems of destruction and oppression that are a necessary aspect of, of doing this work. And so just want to name that. So we can do what we can do. Um, and it's important to do that. It's important in the process to shift and transform our relationship with the earth and with the, the environments that we're in. And we have to continue to um, to grow our own food, eat, eat our own food, grow our own foods, not buy the stuff that supports the destructive arms of, of colonial capitalism, and also actively oppose the ongoing and expansion of destruction. That's a